Hello. Good day everyone, Sir Howard here. Today we will talk about a very interesting concept in the field of social psychology which is called godly efficacy. Before we dig deep into this concept, alamin muna natin yung ibig sabihin ng salitang efficacy or the word efficacious. What does it mean when you say you have a lot of efficacy? Efficacious means in the dictionary adjective producing or capable of producing an intended result or having a striking effect or in another adjective marked by qualities giving the power to produce an intended effect so this word efficacious is where we derive the word or the concept in psychology self-efficacy which refers to a person's let's read certainty that one can successfully meet a challenge in a more popular psychology terms, ito yung tinatawag nating self-confidence. Sa Tagalog, yung ating kumpiyansa sa ating sarili. So, that's what you mean by self-efficacy in the field of psychology. If you want to learn more about the different applications of self-efficacy or you want to dig deeper into self-efficacy, I want you to read the research project by Albert Bandura. Si Albert Mandura talaga kasi yung nag-focus ng kanyang research on self-efficacy issues. Okay? Ang dami niyang mga researches dyan. But anyway, going back to our discussion, pag sinabi natin you are a self-efficacious person, it simply means sigurado ka na ma-overcome mo yung mga problems, yung mga obstacles na kinakaharap mo. Another thing I want you to remember about self-efficacy is it is a measurable concept in psychology. Kaya natin sukatin yan by the use of different psychological instruments. Like one of the most popular instruments being used para masukat yung self-efficacy is what we call the GSES or the Global Self-Efficacy Scale. Let me present to you some of the items na binibigay ng GSES para rin mas maging malalim yung pagkakaintindi ninyo kung ano ba ibig sabihin ng self-efficacy. So, palakihin ko lang yung mga items. My apologies. Medyo mahirap basahin. But anyway, I'm going to read it for you. So, if you take the GSES, you will be given items such as number one, I can always manage to solve difficult problems if I try hard enough. Number two, if someone oppos opposes or is against me, I can find a way to get what I want. Number three, it is easy for me to stick to my plans and accomplish my goals. Number four, I am confident that I could deal efficiently with unexpected events. Number five, thanks to my resourcefulness and ability to figure things out, I know how to handle unexpected or unforeseen situations. So confident kang magaling kang mag-adjust. Number six, I can solve problems if I... Uh, if I invest the necessary effort. Number seven, I can get what I want from people if I make them feel sorry for me. Oh, grabe, may ganung item pala, no? But anyway, so imagine a person na lahat ng sagot niya dyan, four, or mataas yung sagot niya sa mga items na yan, anong tawag mo sa taong yun? You call that a self-efficacious person. I have two examples of people na sa tingin ko kahit hindi sila kumuha ng test na ito, they will score high in these instruments. One good example si Mayweather Jr. I mean, whenever he speaks, whenever he is interviewed about his opponents, talagang ramdam na ramdam mo that he is so confident on his skills as a boxer. Sabi niya, you have to realize that most of these guys get in there and fight on heart. I fight with smarts. There is no fighter that is smarter than me most of these fighters are A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. I am like 4, 5, 6 levels above them. That's why I'm able to beat them. O, ba? So, kahit hindi mo bigyan ng instrument si Mayweather, going back to the items, eh, medyo makakasure tayo, medyo sigurado tayo na matataas yung mga scores na ibibigay niya sa mga items na yan. Another example of a person which I think is very self-efficacious, Lebron James. I mean, for you to say in front of the world that you are the best player in the world, definitely mataas yung iyong self-efficacy. Alright? 
So, I hope I was able to further deepen your understanding kung ano bang ibig sabihin ng self-efficacy in the field of psychology. Now, this is very interesting also. According to psychologists, maganda pala na dapat yung efficacy natin mataas. It's considered psychologically very important. Why? Research have shown that people with high levels of self-efficacy are more likely to achieve well in school, lalong-lalo na yung mga estudyante. Kaya mahalaga talaga na yung mga estudyante na nasa eskwelahan, eh mataas yung kanilang academic self-efficacy to help them achieve great things in school. Self-efficacy is also um, related, strongly related to job effectiveness. So that means, mas mataas yung confidence mo, mas tumataas din yung quality ng iyong trabaho. Kaya ka siguro napopromote ng mabilis, kaya siguro matataas yung rating sa'yo ng supervisor mo because you are so confident in what you do. Diba? I mean, sa tunay na buhay naman talaga, ganun, no? if you are so confident with what you do, kayang-kaya mo yung ginagawa mo, it will affect the quality of your work. And this is also interesting, efficacy is directly linked to wealth or kayamanan, pangpayaman pala ang self-efficacy. So, for those of you who would like to get rich, one way to do this is to work on your self-efficacy. And why is that? Anong kinalaman ng self-efficacy sa wealth? Well, again, number one, because you are so self-efficacious, you are so confident with what you do, kumaganda yung quality ng work mo, which siguro can, can uh, make you be promoted faster, mas tumataas yung sweldo mo, you get wealthier. And another explanation here by psychologists is people who are self-efficacious, they take higher risks. And those higher risks will bring greater returns that makes them faster to accumulate wealth. Okay? So, mabilis ma-promote o maganda ang performance sa trabaho plus ang dami mga returns na bumabalik because of high risk can be explained by high self-efficacy. And also, let's not forget Self-efficacy is very important also in the field of sports because it may even determine whether an athlete will win or will lose the game. Kaya kung mapapansin ninyo no, sa mga athletes, one aspect of the games that they play that is very important is to maintain their efficacy while playing the game. We can see this among basketball players and volleyball players and some other team sports. Diba sa basketball? Kapag yung teammate mo nakashoot or naka 3 point shot, anong gagawin ng mga teammates? Ia high five yung nakashoot. Why? To maintain or to even increase the efficacy of that teammate. Because by maintaining or even by improving the efficacy of that teammate, tumataas yung chance na yung teammate na yon na magaling, lalong gagaling while playing the game, which will increase the chance that the team will win the game that night. Pero mas litaw na litaw kasi yung self-efficacy sa mga volleyball players eh. Kasi kapag nanood ka ng volleyball, whether they lose a possession or they win a possession, they still huddle with each other to maintain efficacy. In cases where they lose a possession, mag sila to encourage each other, right? Na, oh, okay lang yan, natalo tayo this point, next, next turn, next possession, babawi tayo. Pero pag nanalo naman sila sa possession, they will still huddle why to encourage each other to continue doing the great job o di ba kaya mas litaw talaga yung maintenance eh, ng self efficacy sa volleyball than basketball but to make the long story short no ang isang ine-emphasize ko dito is if you are in sports whether you are a player or you are a coach one of the things that you really need to work on your team is your ability to maintain efficacy during the game Kasi oras na bumagsak yung efficacy ng mga atleta while playing the game, ang laking factor niyan why the team will lose the game. So kung ayaw yung matalo yung team nyo, kinakailangan i-maintain nyo yung efficacy ng isa't isa. And that also explains why they are trash talkers in sports. Di ba merong mga players na hindi naman talaga sila ganun kagalingan, pero ang trabaho lang nila sa team is to trash talk the good player or the star player of the opposing team. Why are why why are they doing that? Again, because they want those negative words that they say to enter the psyche of the star player and those negative words 
they're hoping will destroy the confidence of the star player. Kasi oras na bumaba yung kumpiyansa nung tinatrash talk, mainis siya, magduda siya sa sarili niya, it will affect that person's performance in the game which will uh, increase the chance that that team will lose. Di ba kaya totoo yung kasabihan sa sports no na ang sports hindi lang puro physical, it's also a psy war. It's also a psychological game. So you really have to train your athletes or train yourself if you are an athlete yourself na talagang uh, patibayin mo yung psyche mo for trash talkers like this para yung self-efficacy mo hindi babagsak and you maintain your performance. Okay? So those are some of the basic things about self-efficacy. Painom muna ng tubig. All right. Now that you understand what self-efficacy is, now let me just present to you the limit of self-efficacy. Meron na ako nakikita ng loophole in the way how self-efficacy works in mainstream psychology. Going back to the definition of self-efficacy, remember, yung self-efficacy natin nang gagaling palayan sa certain level of uh, certain level of certainty, di ba? So, saan nang gagaling yung self-efficacy na nararamdaman mo, nakakasense ka ng kasiguraduhan. So, yun yung prerequisite. Para magkaroon ka ng self-efficacy, you need your awareness. You, you need to sense within your awareness that there are certain things that are sure na sigurado ka. Okay? So, let me put this in a diagram. It looks something like this. So, again, yung self-efficacy na nararamdaman mo nandyan, which is good, right? It makes you so confident in doing something so well, but that comes from a certain degree of certainty. Alam mo na meron kang kasiguraduhan. Sigurado kung nag-practice ako, sigurado kung meron akong enough skill to overcome this opponent, meron akong enough money to invest in this new business. So that certainty will create a certain degree of self-efficacy. Okay? Now, I want to present to you the loophole or possible problems using this mainstream model of self-efficacy. Loophole number one, alam nyo sa buhay, eh, hindi naman talaga lahat pwedeng certain. Eh. Meron tayo mga situation sa buhay where it's really hard to find things that are so certain, especially when we do things for the first time. Kasi first time mo eh. So, kapag first time mo, marami pa talagang uncertain things dyan. Let's say, you enter a new business venture. You are a newbie in that field. So, it's so hard to find certainty in that field. Kasi nga, bago lahat sa'yo, wala kang past experiences to remember. Diba? So, kapag nasa isang bagay ka na ginagawa mo for the first time, it's so hard to be sure that you will perform well or that you will do well in that field you are doing for the first time. Loophole number two, oh, ito, sa tingin ko, marami makakarelate dito, meron kasing mga pagkakataon in life where certainty, meron tayong certainty at the start, but something bad happens along the way, and that certainty na pinaninindigan natin biglang mawawala. Like for example, oh, uh, you are so certain that you can beat this team. Nagbabasketball kayo, o oh, mahina lang yung team. Given your skill, siguradong sigurado ka sa skill mo, siguradong sigurado ka sa lakas ng katawan mo, you can easily beat this team. But what happened during the game? Na-injury ka. Merong nag-pop doon sa iyong, sa iyong tuhod, biglang sumakit, right? Now you're no longer sure if you can beat the team. Diba? Kasi kanina, nung sure ka na kaya mong talunin yung team, wala, healthy pa yung katawan mo, wala ka pang injury. E bigla kang na-injured. Now, you begin to doubt dahil hindi ka na makagalaw ng maayos. You can no longer defend well. You can no longer become as active as you used to be. Now, you are no longer certain if you can beat this team. Oh, another example will be illnesses. Diba? You are so sure that your business is doing well. You are so sure na marami kang kikitain at the end of the year and then, pandemic happened. Now, you're no longer sure. Diba? Tinamaan ka pa ng COVID. Hindi mo alam if your body can withstand COVID. You are no longer sure if your plans will push through. Kasi lahat ng mga nakabooking na schedule mo, na-cancel na. 
now you're no longer sure if your business will push through. So yun yung point ko, no? going back to loopholes 1 and 2, if self-efficacy comes from certain degree of certainty, but life is full of uncertain, uncertain things, if life is full of situations that will make our future uncertain, at marami pang examples dyan, such as death of a loved one na hindi mo inaasahan, you are so emotionally attached to that person, but that person unexpectedly passes away, right? Or maybe betrayal, you never expected that your best friend will betray you, kasosyo mo sa negosyo, nagtiwala ka sa kanya, binigay mo yung kapital, tinakbuhang ka, that happens a lot in the field of business. Or again, the pandemic. Akala mo, you are so sure within the year, klarong-klaro na yung mga plano mo, and then, pandemic happens, now nothing is sure anymore. Alright? So, yun yung problema sa self-efficacy natin. No? Kapag nangyayari yung mga ganyang events, minsan, yung mga strategies natin on how to maintain our efficacy won't work. The following items that you can see on the screen are different psychological strategies that psychologists teach people on how to maintain their efficacy. Positive self-talk, self-serving bias, self-handicapping, experience of success, social modeling. You can just read this on your own. But all these are being used to maintain our efficacy. Pero yun nga yung point ko. Minsan, sobrang tindi talaga ng mga uncertainty sa buhay like that na kahit anong gamit mo sa mga strategies na yan, they will fall short in maintaining your efficacy. And that's bad. ba? Kapag nag-fall short yung mga strategies na yan in, maintain y- in maintaining your efficacy, nako, papangit yung framework na mangyayari. Because you are now hit by uncertainties in life. Regardless kung anong loophole yung nangyari dyan, no? uncertain ka na, that will make your efficacy go crashing down. Babagsak ngayon yung efficacy mo because again, the the foundation of efficacy is certainty. But there are a lot of uncertainties in life. Boom! Babagsak ngayon yung iyong self-efficacy. And that will lead you to experience a number of negative emotions. Fear, anxiety, worry. And when all those negative emotions combine, it becomes so powerful that it begins to affect your psychological well-being, especially the way you perform. Ikakabagsak niyan yung performance mo. Bababa yung quality ng mga ginagawa mo because of those negative emotions caused by uncertainties. You are no longer playing as you used to play. You are no longer teaching good as you used to teach. Kasi nga, punong-puno ka na ng, ng mga negative emotions na nanggaling sa uncertainties ng buhay. That's the loophole of traditional self-efficacy when we trust ourselves to, to maintain our confidence. Kaya sa tingin ko, mas maganda kung ang paiiralin natin instead of self-efficacy is godly efficacy. What do I mean by godly efficacy? This is a psychological skill where we base the certainty of outcomes on God's supernatural resources. Very different from self-efficacy. Self-efficacy, you base your certainty on the things that you can do, on the things that you have, on the resources that you have. Pero dito, from the self, now you go to God for your efficacy. Para mas malinaw, ginawan ko to ng simple framework, it looks something like this. Yung tinatawag nating godly efficacy. No? So, in your awareness, you can sense God's resources. You are confident that God will give you the resources that you need. And that gives you a certain degree of certainty. And because of that, dyan ngayon lalabas yung tinatawag nating godly efficacy. You are confident to face things in life, not because you have something, not because you have a lot of skills, but because you know God will give you what you need to overcome those problems. I think in the Bible, one of the best statements that reflect godly efficacy is the very popular Philippians 4.13 by the Apostle Paul, where he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Take note of those statements. I can do all things. See? That's already a statement of efficacy. 
when you say, I can do all things, kaya kong lahat, kaya kong i-overcome lahat, efficacy yun eh. But what's different here is the source of this efficacy. Is Apostle Paul saying, I can do all things because I'm Paul? Is he saying that? No. I can do all things, bakit? It's not him, through Christ. Meron siyang supernatural source who is Jesus Christ. And what is this that Christ is giving him that makes him confident that he can do all things? Christ gives strength. So that strength coming from a supernatural source such as Christ is what giving Paul the confidence to say, I can do all things. You see, that's what you mean by godly efficacy. Ibang-iba sa self-efficacy. Again, yung self-efficacy, confident ka na kaya mong harapin yung mga bagay-bagay because of your own things. Meron kang skill, meron kang resources, ikaw. But godly efficacy, you go supernatural. Same statements apply when, for example, oh, again, si Apostle Paul din to, no? When you say something like, uh, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Again, that's a statement of efficacy. But again, where is this efficacy coming from? Ba? Bakit niya sinabing, uh, nobody can be against me? Because of a supernatural resource. Because in this statement, Paul knows na meron siyang alliance with God. That is one example of God's resource that makes him confident. He has alliance with God. If God is with us, who can be against us? In another passage, punta naman tayo sa Old Testament, this statement again are words of efficacy, but a godly efficacy. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Ang gusto ko dito sa Isaiah, very specific yung mga supernatural resources na sinasabi that makes a person confident. What are those supernatural resources coming from God? Well, you are given hope, you are given strength, you are given ability to soar like eagle, ability to run, str uh, strength not to grow weary, na susustain mo yung strength mo. You know, you will you will ability to walk and not be faint. All of those things nang gagaling sa God's resources, it's something supernatural and those things make you confident. You are not confident because you give these things to you. You are confident because God gives those things to you. Yun yung tinatawag nating godly confidence. Again, ang sinasabi ko lang dito is godly efficacy how is this different from self-efficacy? Your awareness, your certainty is based on the supernatural. Okay? Godly efficacy, you are not good or you, you are confident not because you are good. You are confident because you know that God will give you the resources that you need to overcome certain problems in life. Now, there is this one research na sa tingin ko echoes the benefit of godly efficacy. This is based on a study by Fife or Fifth. I don't know how this is pronounced. Uh, Bond Bayars 2011, where they studied African American students. To make the long story short, based on their data, so binigyan sila ng mga psychological instruments to measure certain variables. This is the result of their of their study. When when they have high levels of spirituality they're talking about the African-American students, that causes their efficacy, the godly efficacy to go up, which positively contributes to their academic performance. Kaya tumataas yung kanilang grade. Okay? But in connection to what I'm saying here in this video, I just want you to focus on that part. ba? Ano ang implication nung part na yan? When we see statistically that godly efficacy can increase good grades or can increase grades, it tells you that godly efficacy is something that is good for us. So, when you increase your godly efficacy, based on the study, it can cause a certain positive psychological outcome such as a better performance in school. So, to make the long story short, maganda talaga 
na meron tayong godly efficacy more than self-efficacy. So let me present to you a new model. Ito yung gusto kong i-establish in this video na dapat in our psyche, if we want to maintain our psychological well-being, no? the primary source of our efficacy must be godly. Hindi dapat self-efficacy ang primary. Ang self-efficacy more on secondary lang. Paminsan-minsan lang. Pero majority of the situations, whenever we are faced with problems and obstacles, we need to be relying more on our godly efficacy. More than self-efficacy. I think there is this one passage in the Bible that um, echoes what I'm saying here. Yung sinasabi sa Proverbs. I think this is a direct instruction na dapat talaga meron tayo godly efficacy and not self-efficacy. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You hear that? Lean not on your own understanding. I think it's referring to this this one. Huwag mo raw gawing source yung sarili mong understanding in doing things. Secondary lang yan. I, ilagay mo yan sa likod. Ano ang iharap mo? Yung source number one, godly efficacy. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's source number one. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your paths straight. Alright? So, yan yung aking pinopropose na model. If we want to really maintain our psychological well-being, we need to be relying more on godly efficacy more than self-efficacy. Kasi nga, yung self-efficacy maraming loopholes yan. Talagang marami pagkakataon that your self-efficacy will not help you get through those tough problems in life. In the Bible, uh, para lang i-demonstrate ko no, how godly efficacy works, I think the story of David perfectly reflects kung ano bang ibig sabihin ng godly efficacy. Si David, where did he get the confidence to fight Goliath? I'm sure what David had um, in fighting Goliath the confidence that he had was godly efficacy. Uh, bilisan lang natin yung story ano, para sa mga walang background dito. So, Goliath is a big guy. He's a Philistine. Every day, he was uh, challenging the Israelite army to fight him. Nobody wants to because again, he's big, he's experienced, ang kapal na mga armors niya. Everyone was scared. Until David heard that Goliath was making fun of Israel. So, hindi nakatiis si David dito pumunta siya kay King Saul to present himself to be the one to fight Goliath. Now, dun pa lang eh. What made David approach King Saul and present himself to fight Goliath? Sagot, efficacy. What kind of efficacy? Godly efficacy. Paano mo nalaman, sir, na yung efficacy ni David dito is godly efficacy? Look at how he convinced uh, King Saul para payagan siya to fight Goliath. Kasi nung una niyang prinesent sarili niya, si King Saul, walang confidence kay David. Diba? Nakita niya na si David, eh bata pa, bagito pa lang, kakainin lang siya ng buhay ni Goliath. But David insisted to fight Goliath. What did he say? To really convince the king to let him fight Goliath? Let me read. 1 Samuel 17.37 The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. Kasi the verses before this, ang pinagmalaki ni David, nung may mga days na habang nagsishepherd siya, nakapatay siya ng leon at ng bear using his hands. ba? So yun yung pinepresent niya kay King Saul. Payagan niyo na ako kasi hindi naman ako totally helpless. Malakas ako. Nakakapatay ako ng leon at ng bear. But I want you to notice something here. Where did he attribute his ability to kill a lion and a bear? How did he see those days that he killed a lion and a bear? Going back to 1 Samuel 17.37, he saw that as a rescue. Diba? David saw that as a rescue. I was able to kill the bear and a lion not because I'm good, but because God rescued me from these wild animals. He gave me strength. He gave strength to my to my hands for me to kill the lion and the bear. And that's the reason that I was able to do this. You see, he attributed this to God. So yung sinasabi dito ni David na nakapatay ako ng lion at ng bear, it's not self-efficacy, it's godly efficacy. Right? 
And again, look at what David said here. Let me repeat. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. He still wants to fight Goliath because he's confident. But where is his confidence coming from? Where is the efficacy coming from? Back to a supernatural source, God. The rescue that he received from God nung nakapatay siya ng lion at ng bear, naniniwala siya that God will rescue him from the Philistine. So that's godly confidence that David is showing here in this narrative. Diba? Kaya ako talaga naniniwala na si David, yung pinapakita niya dito is godly efficacy, not self-efficacy. Ang maganda pa sa godly efficacy is, you know, you can really depend on godly efficacy especially when when a certain problem is so big that not one psychological technique for increasing your confidence will work and what is that what could be that problem that is so big na kahit anong gawin mo gawin mong self efficacy hindi talaga uubra i think our problem with death diba yan talaga ang hirap mong i-maintain yung confidence mo in the face of death. I mean, imagine you know you're dying. Imagine that you are close to dying. Oh, talagang hindi mo alam saan mo huhugutin yung confidence mo dyan eh. Because, first time mong mamatay. First time mong mapupunta sa afterlife. Right? So, ang hirap mong humugot ng confidence when you are in the face of death or when you are seeing death face to face. Right? So, going back to my to my statement here, between these two, oh, kanino ka magre-rely? Are you going to rely on your self-efficacy in dealing with death or with godly efficacy dealing with death? I would choose source number one. This is the best way to deal with death. Have a godly efficacy in facing death. In fact, again, going back to David, he did this many times in his life. There are many times his life is in danger, death is looking right at him, but in those times that he's facing the threat to his life, he is using his godly confidence, his godly efficacy more than his self-efficacy. In fact, we can see that in Psalms 23, how David relies on godly efficacy in the face of death. Let me read for you. No? Nanganganib yung buhay ni David dito sa Psalms 23, but look at what he wrote. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Ye, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he will be and his life is in danger. Look at this. Listen to this. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Those statements are words of efficacy. But where is his efficacy coming from? From God. Diba? Because he knows na kahit kaharap niya yung death, meron pa rin siyang guidance. Diba? Coming from God. Meron pa rin siyang guidance coming from God. So he's confident in facing death. Though thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord that kind of efficacy comes from a godly efficacy hindi niya sinasabi dito na i can face death because i know i'm good i can face death because i know what to do no pinapaubaya niya sa resources ng Diyos yung 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 mangyayari sa kanya okay so he is he is depending on the resources that God will give him and that gives him confidence in facing death now fast forward after Psalm 23 no eto non biblical character to si Audrey Asad wrote a hymn entitled Abide with me trivia alam niyo ba yung yung kanta na Abide with me it's a hymn by the way madalas ito kinakanta ng mga tao who is facing death. It, it gives, it helps people to have confidence to face death. But if you read the lyrics of the hymn, 
makikita mo na yung source ng efficacy dito in facing death is a godly kind of efficacy. Abide with me, fast falls the ever tight. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When the others help fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. Ito, gusto ko rin i-emphasize to, no? When others helpers fail and comforts flee, ibig sabihin, posible na yung yung iyong efficacy comes from other people. And that's possible. Okay? People give you confidence but that's not even, not even that is a reliable source of efficacy kasi it can flee. They can stop making you confident. Right? They can run away from you. They can get tired making you confident but not with God. Help of the helpless on abide with me. Swift to its close ebbs out of life's little day Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changes not, abide with me. So saan nang gagaling yung confidence niya dito? Facing death, he knows. The, he knows that God is abiding with him. Or it's abiding with her. Nandoon ang Diyos habang kinakaharap niya yung kamatayan. Alright, so that's what you mean by godly confidence, a much more reliable source of confidence than self-efficacy. Now, let me just close this video by promoting to you godly efficacy more by giving you three advantages. Ano ba yung mga magagandang makukuha natin if we learn godly efficacy more than self-efficacy? Number one, alam nyo, uh, kapag ikaw ay nasa godly efficacy, mas konte yung magagamit mong psychological energy in making yourself confident. Kasi kapag ikaw ang nagbibigay ng confidence sa sarili mo, right? You collect resources, you learn different skills, you perform well, nakakapagod yan. It's so hard to make yourself confident every day. And I know many of you will agree. Diba? Monday to Sunday, ginagawa mong confident yung sarili mo. Sometimes it gets so tiring. Especially when there are a lot of oppositions that is against you, against you, talagang minsan nakakapagod na going confident yung sarili mo. But if you have godly confidence, you don't have to perform that much. Nasisave mo yung psychological energy mo for something else. Right? Kasi hindi mo na hinahawakan eh. You, you have already given your ability to overcome problems to God. To the supernatural source not on you so you are doing yourself a favor here pinapagaan mo yung mga bagay-bagay number two ang maganda pa dito sa godly efficacy the resources is unlimited diba when we talk about God's guidance when we talk about God's love God's wisdom hindi na uubos yan eh unlike kapag yung mga strategies na ginagamit mo to maintain your efficacy is self-develop na uubos yan eh Diba? Minsan, nawawalan ka na ng positive self-talk. Nawawalan ka na ng magandang sasabihin sa sarili mo. Nawawalan ka na ng pera to maintain a business. Unlim ano, very limited kapag self-efficacy. But godly efficacy, very unlimited. It never runs out. So, you don't have to stress yourselves, yourself out na baka mawalan ka ng resources in meeting this problem kasi nga, yung source mo, unlimited. The source of your efficacy is supernatural. And last one, number three, you will still be psychologically okay no matter what the outcome is. Diba? Merong problem. It demands a certain degree of efficacy. Pero yung efficacy mo na ginagamit is godly efficacy. Now, you do your best. You do your best. You trust God. You do what you have to do. You use all your resources that God is giving you. And then, at the end, kapag pumalpak pa rin. Pag pumalpak pa rin yung, yung pumalpak ka pa rin dun sa obstacle that you are facing, your self-efficacy will still be protected. Diba? Compared to kapag self-efficacy ka naka, naka-rely, ginawa mo lahat, pumalpak ka pa rin, pumalpak ka, possibility you begin to doubt yourself. So, bumagsak na ngayon self-efficacy mo, pinagdudahan mo pa yung sarili mo, two perfect ingredients to really destroy your mental health. Siguro para mas malinaw, no, i-demonstrate ko tong number three. Let's say, oh, you're playing basketball. 
Okay? Para mas simple, let's just put it in the in the context of sports. There is a stronger team. Championship game. You are the star player. You know you're good. You know you have the skills. But then again, ano sinabi ko? Hindi ka nagre-rely doon. Okay? You have watched this video and you followed what I've told you. Nandoon ka sa godly efficacy. So you pray to God, Lord, this is a stronger team. I know I'm good. You have given me the gift to be good in this sport. Okay? I will just do my best. Use all the resources that you have that you will be giving me, wisdom, skills during the game. But at the end of the day, whether or not we will beat this team, it's all up to you. Kapag ganun yung orientation mo, I want you to see the difference, no? Kapag self-efficacy ka, oh, I thought uh, just natalo ka. Natalo kayo dun sa team na yon. I thought I was good. Kala ko magaling ako, but hindi ko natalo yung team. O, di ba? Kasi naka-self-efficacy ka lang eh. So, nag-self-doubt ka na. Now, you begin to ask, maybe I'm not that good. You begin to question yourself, or even, ito, very common din to, you even begin to blame other people about what happened. Kaya kami natalo kasi yung mga yung teammates ko eh. Hindi magagaling eh. O, di nasira pa yung atmosphere ng team. Diba? Kasi nakarelay ka sa self mo. But when you have godly efficacy and you lose the game, look at the way you see the situation. By God's grace, I have this gift. Alam mo pa rin na magaling ka. You never doubt that. Right? Because you know that God gave you an athletic body. Eh bakit kayo natalo? Because He has lessons for us to learn. Whatever that is. Maybe God wants the team to learn more. Maybe God wants the team to mature more, right? Whatever the reason is, bakit kayo natalo? God has a plan. See? Your efficacy remains intact here. Hindi mo pinagdudahan yung sarili mo kasi natalo kayo. Rather, you look at the negative event in a positive light. That maintains your efficacy. Diba? Ikumpara mo doon sa unang strategy kung talagang lahat nakasalalay sa sarili mo. Now you begin to doubt yourself. Magaling ba ako? Baka hindi. Eh, yung mga teammates ko kasi. There you go. So that's the advantage of godly efficacy. Kahit ano pang mangyari, in the end, matalo ka man o manalo sa problem mo, your efficacy will still remain intact. So I hope I was able to convince you na maganda talaga ang godly efficacy more than self-efficacy. Now the question is, How do you develop godly efficacy? Remember, this is a psychological skill. What are the different steps that we can do para maging maganda yung ating godly efficacy? Para ma-develop natin yung ating ability to, to lean not on our own understanding but to lean more on a supernatural source of efficacy? Yan yung gagawa natin ng video next time. Alright? So, I hope you learned something new today na maganda talaga ang godly efficacy sa mga buhay natin. So, if you have any questions, just comment down below and I'm going to do my best to answer those questions. Alright? Thank you everyone for listening. I hope you learned something new. Have a great day. God bless. I'll see you around.